Sehunu and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a special guest, my mom, who came here and she's going to show me how to do water bath canning today. Today we're going to be doing four different recipes. Spaghetti sauce, salsa, zucchini relish, and strawberry jam. It's going to be so amazing. So if you want to learn how to do water bath canning, then just watch for the rest of the video. first took time to cut all these tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes that we chose and we did about 4.6 pounds for this recipe. We are going to have all the recipes in the description below if you want to follow along but just so you know we did season with our heart for most of the time so I'm just going to give you measurements that are the best that we can give you. We are washing the tomatoes now. We did wash every vegetable that we used in this video and my mom is explaining how we are going to cut them first we cut them in half and then we take the core out of them because my mom said it doesn't boil too well and then we cut them another time in half so there'll be four pieces per tomato i did want to share that my mom came to visit me and that's why we're doing four different recipes on one day but so that it's not overwhelming in the future whenever i do canning i'm only going to be doing one recipe at a time so that i'm not in the kitchen for hours and hours doing four different things it was a lot easier to do it when my mom came because it was both of us and she was teaching me along the way though we then put the tomatoes in this large pot so that it can start boiling down. And while I did that, I also used a lot of garlic and it's because I just love garlic. You'll notice that these recipes are things that we've come up with, but really you can do a lot to make it your own. If you're not a fan of garlic, don't put garlic in it. We then washed our green peppers and we started to dice the green peppers for the pasta sauce. And now we are dicing up some onions to be able to put that in the pasta sauce as well. We started to wash the tomatoes for the salsa now because we did the pasta sauce and the salsa at the same time. For the salsa, we decided to dice the tomatoes and then we are going to get it started on another pot and another burner on the stove. We then opened a can of tomato paste to put inside the pasta. And you can see here that the tomatoes are already starting to boil down. And we are just mixing it around to make sure that it's all incorporated. We then put some lime juice into the pasta sauce. It's really important to have that acidity because we are going to be storing this for long term. Even though after this video, my husband and I ate the pasta sauce jars in about two weeks. So they're basically gone, but usually they're able to last in the storage for about a year. Next, we put in the green peppers and started to crush the tomatoes down with this wooden spoon. We then put in the onions and I kept on mixing it around so that it's all well incorporated together. We then put in two bay leaves and some salt and all of the seasonings that we put in the pasta sauce will be in the description like I said before. But really we put in some onion powder, garlic powder, salt, Italian seasonings and things like that. My mom put in some avocado oil. I know it looks like olive oil but it's avocado oil. Parsley and those are the Italian seasonings like I said. Now that's some black pepper. And now we're just making sure that it's all well incorporated. You can see that it's really starting to look like pasta sauce now. It smelled so good when we were making it. Now this really important part is to put sugar in it. It sounds interesting, but pasta sauce definitely needs sugar. It's so tasty. And you can put as much or as little as you like. Now I'm putting some garlic into the salsa. And I'm using the Immersion Blender to start blending up the pasta sauce. I really wanted it to be a very smooth sauce, and now look at how smooth that looks. Now we're tasting it, and it tasted so good. Now my mom is cutting up a pepper. We decided to use a pepper that wasn't too spicy because I don't like spicy salsa. Now I'm getting my kettle pot ready for the actual canning process. 
I'm first filling up the canning pot with water and starting to put that on the boiler. We put vinegar into the salsa for that acidity and then we put in some salt as well and some other seasonings that are going to be in the description. We are now washing the jars that we are going to be using for the pasta sauce. We made sure that we wash them very well so that there's nothing from the machine factory that made them or no residue. And then we are using the hot water that we boiled with the kettle to pour over all the jars to make sure they don't break during the canning process when they are poured into the boiling hot water later. And yes, the jars will be very hot because we just poured all that hot water on them, like I said, so that they're prepared and ready for the hot water that they will be put in for the canning process. We use the funnel to start funneling in the pasta sauce into the jars. Once it's filled to the line, now we are using this little tool here to make sure that all of the bubbles are out before we actually close the jar. Now we are using a napkin with vinegar on it to clean the edges and then closing it just tight enough. You want to make sure that it's not extremely tight because while it is in the boiling water and setting, you don't want it to warp and not seal properly so you got to make sure that it's not extremely tight it's just tight enough so that it closes we only had enough for about three of the larger jars we poured water over to make sure that the jars were covered and then we covered that for about 15 minutes once you hear a popping sound and you will notice it that's when they are ready we first boiled it for about 15 minutes and then we let it keep on boiling for another 15 minutes until we heard the popping sound. But look at how gorgeous they turned out. I started to cut up the things for the zucchini. We have some yellow peppers, red peppers, and then we also have some yellow summer squash and zucchini going into this zucchini relish. It turns out into this beautiful mixture that my mom is mixing around right now. I think it's so gorgeous. And what she did was put salt in there so that all the moisture and the water can seep out of the zucchini relish. And you'll see as she keeps on mixing, it turns into this. Now all that water is out of there and later on we're going to drain that. Immersion blender on the salsa so that it wasn't super chunky. And after that, I started boiling the boiling water over the jars like how we did for the pasta sauce to make sure that they don't break during the process. I started to just do the same process over again. I used the funnel to start pouring in the salsa into the jars. Look at how beautiful the salsa is. You guys, this turned out so delicious. I am so excited to do it again. We ate this salsa so fast after we made it. There was only a few jars, but we really ate it so fast. Doing the same process by making sure that I wipe around the rim with a napkin that has some white vinegar on it so that it's clean, so that it seals properly. That's the reason why you want to make sure it's clean so that it seals properly. I close it just tight enough, not too tight, and I put it in the boiling water. And I keep on just doing this process over and over again as I fill up the jars. Now I did want to share with you that it will expand. So you don't want to overfill your jars. You just want to fill it enough but it will expand as it goes into this process. You also have to make sure that you slowly put it down like how I just did, filling it up with the boiling water so that it's all nicely covered. And then we just cover it and let it boil for another 15 minutes or so. I started with the strawberries now. My favorite part, the strawberry jam. It smelled so delicious in my home. But first, we made sure that we cleaned the strawberries very well with vinegar and water. We let it sit for a moment. I'm scarred from an instance where I bought strawberry jam from the store and there was actually a bug inside my jam. So now I just make sure whenever I make jam, which is this is my first time, but I want to make sure whenever I have strawberries to thoroughly clean them. So, and with all my fruit really. But now we are going to cut off the tops and then we cut it into four pieces. We did that for all of the strawberries. I believe there was about three pounds, but I'll put the exact measurements in the description. And we just did that for a while. So enjoy some music as we do this together, me and my mom.
after doing that we then put all the strawberries into a pot so that it can start boiling down and then i put two tablespoons of lemon juice for some acidity to help it while it, it stays in the jars for months and i mix it around to make sure that it's all well incorporated while that was boiling down we started to keep on working on the zucchini so now we're taking that zucchini mixture that was sitting in the salt and we are just rinsing it and making sure that it's not extremely salty from that right so we're taking that rinsing it well and then we put it into this huge pot we're putting about two cups of apple cider vinegar into it and we're letting that boil on like a medium heat now we're putting some different spices and different seeds and things like that into it. And then we're putting sugar. It was about a cup and a half. we heard the pop on the jars we knew that our salsa was ready and look at how beautiful this turned out and i love the jars that you picked i think they were called quilted jars or something like that they're so beautiful the salsa turned out so delicious once the zucchini relish is ready now we're using the same process again to can the other jars using the funnel to put the zucchini relish in there where you are not filling it up too high because it does expand you do want to make sure that you only are filling it up to the fill line not all the way to the top because it will expand as it is canning we're making sure that all the bubbles are right we did this for the salsa as well and then We take the vinegar, put it around there, make sure that it's all clean, closing it up just tight enough, not too tight. And now we are putting it into the water just like that. You guys, this zucchini relish can be used on hot dogs, hamburgers, sandwiches, anything that you would use relish on, you could use this on and I promise you it is so delicious. One of my favorite parts about this relish is how beautiful it is. Those peppers really add color into the relish and it turned out so pretty. Then we slowly put the cans down into the hot water. Then I put the lid on and now we're doing it again for another 15 minutes until it pops. But it actually ends up taking around 15, 20, 30 minutes. I really took slowly seriously. I'm not sure if it has to be that slow, but... Now we are using the immersion blender for the strawberry jam now. I do like some of the strawberries to be there like a little chunky in my jam. Then we're putting the sugar in. And then we are now putting the pectin in, which is what is going to help the jam actually firm up and become a jam. And here is the package of pectin that we did use. And you guys, once it was done, we took the spoon and we just put our finger across it. And if the line stayed there and it wasn't running down, then we knew that it was done. Now I'm following the same canning process like how I've been. I use a clean funnel and I put the strawberry jam into the jar making sure not to fill it up too much. Before we actually did that, we did the same process before like cleaning these beautiful jelly jam jars that I got at the store and then boiling hot water pouring that over it as well. Now making sure that all of the bubbles are out and then using the napkin that has some vinegar on it to make sure that the top is clean before I actually put the lid on. Once I was done with all of the jars, we then put all of them into the boiling pot and slowly put them into the water so they can boil for about 15 to 20, 30 minutes until we heard a pop and they were done. Now look at how beautiful this relish turned out. You guys, it turned out so delicious. It's gorgeous. It looks so beautiful in my pantry. And then look how beautiful my jelly came out beautiful 
it was all so delicious and it was so much fun look at all of our hard work just sitting over there and resting okay guys well i hope that you enjoyed the whole video of my mom and i canning together it was such an amazing experience and i can't wait to can more things in the future i think next i'm gonna find some good peaches so i can can some peaches i love having peaches in the summer and I want to be able to do pickles and a lot of different things in the future. A couple of things I did want to say is I'm sorry about how sporadic it was because of how many things we were doing at once. We were kind of overlapping a lot of times, which is why you'll see me doing one thing and then going to the next and going back to it is because we we're doing so many things at once. But my mom did tell me, and I think I said this earlier in the video, that next time that I do canning, I'm going to make sure that I only do one or two things at a time. That way it's not overwhelming and that way I can do more of that thing. Because we did four different recipes, we were only able to do a few cans of each thing, but in the future I'll buy in bulk and do more. I did wanna also share a tip that my mom told me before you actually start the canning process to make sure that the jars have no nicks on the top of them. So just run your finger around the jars before you start and make sure that there's no nicks or little cracks on the top because if you have nicks and things like that, it won't seal properly. Or else if it doesn't seal properly, then you can't store it for long-term use. My mom told me over and over again to make sure that you do it right during the canning process or else you're gonna lose your hard work, which is why my mom told me to pour hot boiling water over the cans before we actually put it in the hot water or else we're gonna lose our hard work because it can easily crack if the temperatures change too much. Another thing as well, this is my strawberry jam that I did, and it is in this beautiful jar. I wanted to share with you guys how you know that it actually sealed properly, because if you did all this work, and then at the end, they didn't actually seal properly, then you can't store them for months and months. So this is what my mom told me to do whenever they were done, and I believe we let them sit for about one day. So we let them sit for 24 hours before we actually did this. But the next day, we took all of the jars without the rings on it and then we held it like this and if it can be held on its own then it's sealed properly and one jar out of all of them wasn't sealed properly and that's because i accidentally put two of the lids on it these little small things i accidentally put two on it and because of that, it didn't seal properly. So in that case, if it didn't seal properly, don't worry. You can just put it in the fridge and eat it right away. So yeah, that's how you know that it's sealed properly. All right, guys, I hope that you learned a lot. I hope that it was a great experience to watch. It definitely was so fun for me, like I said. This is just the start of homesteading and different things that I wanna do in the future. Preserving my own food and being able to feed my family with things that I created with my own hands is just such a blessing. I can't wait to be able to do it with the garden and different things that I'm growing. I did wanna also share a little sneak peek of the next video that I will be posting here pretty shortly these next couple weeks. I'm going to be sharing with you guys my whole entire process of starting my balcony garden and giving you guys a garden update of the garden that I started a few months back. If you're interested in the video of me starting that garden during the winter time, then watch this video here. But I am starting it now that it's summertime. I'm doing a few things differently and I'm so excited to share that all with you along with me getting a whole lemon tree. Yes, I got a lemon tree in my city apartment. So I'm excited to share with you guys that whole entire journey. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.